<laughs> we're not done ladies and gentlemen we're not done arsenal is not done in this transfer window ladies and gentlemen welcome to EGL talks football where we're going to be talking about arsenal news today and talking about all the latest arsenal news of course Declan Rice, Kai Havertz and Yuri and Timber have come in that's old news now arsenal have just officially left for their U.S. tour last yesterday, and they've announced the squad. We're going to go through it. In addition to that, there's been some reports about who we could potentially target and some potential outgoings with maybe Balogun, maybe Partey, and who would be coming in? A right winger? Another midfielder? Sounds like we might have five signings by the end of the transfer window. Let's get into it. Here we go. Tip. Yes, 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 people. Do me a favor. First of all, if you've gotten this far in the video, hit a like on the video. Let me know what you guys think and also where you're watching from. Of course, all the Arsenal fans across the world, I love to know where you guys are watching from and let me know what you guys think. Now, first things first. The first question is, would you want Arsenal to sell Thomas Partey and for how much? And also, if we were to sell Balogun, would you be interested in selling Balogun and for how much? Because these two are currently co uh, coexisting. It could be a possibility where we'll need to sell both of them or at least one of them to uh, to to bring in a quality player in the attacking end. And of course, if we lose Thomas Partey, we're going to bring in another midfielder. But it does look like it's closer and closer to the exit of Thomas Partey and Flo Balogun. So let's, so let's get into all these conversations and let's look at everything that we're seeing right now. So I woke up about uh, I woke up about a couple hours ago and I just seen some of these reports so let's go through let's go through them all one by one right here we go uh, of course don't forget to hit that like button big up to everybody watching the show so first you understand that Thomas Partey is edging closer to an exit from Arsenal Football Club coming from uh, uh, Tic Tac uh, Tiki Taka Connor he is a very good reliable source then you have another report here that inter uh, inter have uh, have offered around 40 million euros for Balogun. So we're going to have to wait and see how that escalates and how things go from there. Apparently, we've uh, they've offered 40 million euros. And would you sell Balogun for 40 million euros? And how much would you sell Partey for? So let's continue with that. Now, in other news, there's reports from Chris Wheatley saying that um, that Cedric is an omission from Arsenal's preseason uh, from the U.S. tour. It was a tactical decision. Not He's not close to a move away yet, but the situation is expected to develop and continue for weeks. Now, it also has been reported that Cedric wants to stay at Arsenal and fight for his place to potentially play Champions League football, but I don't think that's going to happen. So we're going to have to wait and see where things go from there. Now, there is also more reports that um, with the situation happening with Inter Milan uh, and, and and Lukaku no longer being uh, of their uh, uh, their number one target, they've now turned their attentions to Balogun and they're willing to offer us around 40 million euros. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I would be more uh, okay to sell Balogun. Let me know in the comment section if you guys would be okay to sell Balogun. I think the Balogun situation, if we don't sell him, could become a similar situation to Ainsley Maitland Niles, where we're going to look back at the money we could have gotten and we're going to regret it. I'm not saying that Balogun is not a great talent and he's not a great player. I'm just saying there's an opportunity to cash in now and continue to, to, to pay for the... Uh, continue to uh, further expand the squad where I don't think Balogun will be such a big part in our potential title challenge this upcoming season. I look at our forwards and yes, we might need a better forward in the future, but at this moment in time, I don't think Balogun is ready to be an impact player off the bench or starting for Arsenal. And, and I don't think the 20 goals that he scores in France is indicative that he's better than Gabriel Jesus at this moment in time. Now, you're going to say he's better than Eddie and Ketia. And although I might agree with you there, I still don't see the offers coming in for Eddie and Ketia to sell him. If I could sell both, I would. But the reality is we only have offers coming in for Balogun, and I think we should take the offers. Um, the offers uh, the offers around Balogun, of course, are many and few between. Let's, let's, let's continue, though. There is also reports from Fabrizio Romano about two hours ago about Arsenal's academy goalkeeper, Arthur Konku. He could also be going on on a permanent transfer. This would make sense if we, either, if, we can't, if we can't get a loan for him, get him on a permanent deal elsewhere. And, of course, he doesn't seem like he has plans long term. There's also reports that Omar, uh, Omar Rakic could be moving to Birmingham City come the end of the season, uh, come the end of the transfer season uh, window on loan. 
there's more reports here. Inter, Inter Milan are serious exploring a deal for Arsenal forward Balogun. Arsenal have valued him at 50 million, uh, 50 million uh, uh, pounds. So I would love to see if we can get the 50 million pounds. I don't know if we're going to be able to get 50 million pounds, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, the situation with um, Thomas Partey continues. Four hours ago, there was reports that Thomas Partey could leave the club. Uh, there, there's currently no suitors for him at this moment in time, but things could change. Now, it is reported that Al Halal are seriously interested in him. There's also two other Saudi Arabian clubs that are seriously interested in him. Juventus have shown that they're interested in him, but they're not willing to pay the money that he wants. Um, the situation with uh, at Saudi is that he's accepted the wages, and now Arsenal and a Saudi club just need to come to an agreement on how much. He, uh, uh, of a, buy, a buyout clause or, or fee we can arrange for him. I think Arsenal wants somewhere in the region of 45 million pounds. So if we can get 45 million pounds, we're probably going to sell Thomas Partey. Personally, for me, I would have kept Thomas Partey, but I understand that the club is not going to be trying to go for a younger profile of player to come in that can that, that also has the level of quality and experience in the Premier League where we're, it's not going to be as big of a risk. So we're going to try to go for Romeo Lavia. But there's always going to be a risk when you're getting rid of one of the better mid, uh, defensive midfielders in world football for somebody who's very relatively unproven. But guess what? We have Declan Rice through the door, so it makes the transition a lot easier, in my opinion. Now, uh, talking about Nuno Tavares and Reese Nelson, um, if you guys don't know, Arsenal have... Have, a, have gone on their uh, U.S. tour, and some of the players that are going to be missing from the U.S. tour have been announced. Now, I'm just going to show you guys uh, the U.S. tour images uh, right now quickly. Let me just get that up for you guys. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. So, of course, uh, Tavares is on holiday. Reese Nelson got injured, so he might, he's not going to be coming on. Arthur Cuenco is edging closer to a move. Thomas Partey is not with the team yet. Uh, so is not. Cedric is also not with the team. You also have a situation where Lokonga is not with the team and Pepe is not with the team. So the team that Arsenal put out for, uh, for the team is right there. You can see everyone there in the image. And of course, I did do a video on this, but let me just break it down. You have Ramsdale, Saliba, Kieran Tierney, Ben White, Gabriel, Saka, Odegaard, Jesus, Martinelli, Timber, Runnerson, uh, Eddie Nketiah, Jakub Kevor, Holding, uh, Holding, Tamiyasu, Trossard, Jorginho, Fabio Vieira, Alneni, Lokonga, Marquinhos, Havertz, Hein, Trusty, Zinchenko, Rice, and of course, the young, the youngster, Emorio, uh, going also. They didn't send any of the other youngsters like Ethan and Nawari. They still have school and stuff, so they couldn't send them across. But of course, they're going to still play in that in those final games before the preseason ends. And the team is now headed to the United States to play their first uh, their first big game of the preseason headed into this preseason. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Arsenal play their next preseason game uh, on the 20th. So in three days' time, we play the MLS All-Stars. So that's um, so that's the first preseason game. And then after that, we play the, on the 22nd, we play Manchester United. And on the 27th, we play Barcelona. So we're going to have to wait and see how this goes. We still have another one, two, three, four, five preseason games before the season starts, including the game at Monaco for the Emirates Cup and the, and the Community Shield game. Uh, versus Manchester City. So this is there's a lot of football still to be played so we're going to have to wait uh, we're going to have to wait and see how things develop there and no rush uh, at this moment in time. Now let's continue. Uh, with that being said there we, we're going to have to get into some other stuff. Oh, Arsenal also have now become the most valuable team in world football as reported that Manchester City yes, Manchester City have been overtaken by Arsenal's squad value since we've now bought Declan Rice and his, he's brought our value over the threshold of 1.19 uh, 1 billion euros to 1.21 billion euros. And this is all because of our, not because of just our spending, but also because of our great recruitment our, our, and the ability to get young players whose values have massively increased. This, this squad was not even valued as one of the top 10 in the, top 10 in Europe just a couple yeah just I, th I think like two years ago now we're number one it's crazy crazy to think right crazy how things go then we also have uh Albert Sambi Lokonga could potentially be leaving the club this is some great news because I I don't think he has a future at Arsenal Football Club so it's great to see that we could actually garner, garner a fee for him um I'll honestly take anything over 
Anything over 10 million, I think we should take. At this moment in time, we paid 20 something million for him. We're not going to get that money back in return. Um, this is crazy for me that Cedric wants to fight for his place and stay at Arsenal. Actually, I'm not surprised, but if Arsenal wants to keep him, I'll be more surprised. Arsenal should be moving him on. Cedric does not have a future at Arsenal Football Club, and he, I don't think he's good enough to be playing Champions League football for us. Um, Inter Milan make an offer of 40 million euros for Balogun, as reported by RAA. I sport. We already spoke about this earlier in the video. I don't think we're going to take 40 million euros. We're going to want at least 50 million euros. And that's around 45 million pounds. If that does happen, that makes more sense, in my opinion. Um, then we have the situation here where um, Arsenal have made, uh, have not done, uh, Arsenal are not done in the market yet. They are still in the market for a new right uh, right-sided forward. So we're going to have to wait and see what's next. Who's next, do you guys think? Who do you guys think will be next? Will it be a Romeo Lavia? Will it be another uh, another attacking player? What could we be doing next to, to bring in through the door? Of course, we got Rashford and everything. And then also, we got to talk about, we got to talk about this right here because with the news three signings, have Arsenal closed the gap? Have Arsenal closed the gap this transfer window with Manchester City? Let me know what you guys think. Have Arsenal closed the gap? Have we made our, our closer to our, have we gotten ourselves a couple steps closer to our competition and where we want to be going forward? Let me know what you guys think about that because I think we have gotten ourselves a little bit closer to our competition and this is great to see. Now, Xavi Simon, uh, I just want to show you guys Xavi Simon was trending yesterday because he has made a move, but the move is to actually is actually to go back to PSG. And when he goes back to PSG, he's going to end up going on loan, but he's going to probably go to the Bundesliga to play for Labour uh, for for Leipzig. So Xavi Simon announces the next move could be tomorrow. Leipzig remain the favorites as Xavi Simon's loan from PSG with no option to buy. All parties have given the green light, depending on PSG guaranteeing a game time on the player side. So if if Mbappe and, and Neymar don't move, he's going to be going on loan. If one of them leave, he's going to be staying at PSG. There's no single link to him and Arsenal anymore. So we can put to bed the Xavi Simon links. There's nothing there anymore. And it's just, uh, you could say it's unfortunate, you could say whatever you want, but unfortunately, uh, but from our perspective, there's nothing happening there anymore, and we're just not going to be seeing any links from uh, from him and to Arsenal. And that's just the situation at this moment in time. Um, anything else that's ongoing at this moment in time? Let's see what is happening. What is happening? What else is happening? Um, we got some people talking about Balogun still. We've already spoken about that. The players have already arrived. Oh, Nicolas Pepe. Let me tell you guys what's going on with Pepe. So Pepe is amongst the players that is out of the, the squad and he's not going to be part of the squad. Pepe is training alone and not seen as part of the group, not reintegrated into the group. Pepe is not going to be reintegrated into the group and he's not going to be given an opportunity to get into this team. He's not going to be given an opportunity to fight for his place. Uh, and that is the situation at this moment in time. Now with, with Eddie Nketiah, Reports are that Eddie and Ketia will be staying at Arsenal. Uh, Gunnar Blog saying that I don't think Eddie will go. That is a direct quote from Gunnar Blog, and he does see to know a lot about everything in regards to Arsenal. Um, reportedly, that Carl Hein Hein to go again. Uh, it, it could it could be a situation where we go again with Kyle Hein as the third goalkeeper, and Runnerson will most likely be loaned out or sold. So Carl Hein will be staying. Runnerson will be the one that will be leaving, and that will be our third string goalkeeper for for the foreseeable future. Matt Turner will of course be our number two goalkeeper, and yeah, that is it for today. Nothing else really going on about anything in regards to that, and. Yeah, that's pretty much it. There's nothing else really to talk about. I've, I've, I've pretty much gone through everything that we need to go through. Uh, yeah, that's all for today. You guys have yourselves a wonderful day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the stream. Just a just short video to explain everything that's going around in Arsenal. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did get to this point in the video, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Do check me out on my Twitter. TikTok, YouTube, everywhere you can find me. Just type in Egal Talks Football and you can probably find it. And you guys have yourselves a wonderful day. I'm out of here, people. Peace. Love for the love.